Alaska Ocean Leadership Awards was established as an annual awards to encourage and give recognition to outstanding achievements related to ocean sciences, education, and resource management here in Alaska. As Joanna said, I'm Jeff Dillon. I'm the Senior Education Manager here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. I'm filling in for our CEO, Tara Reamer. She apologizes for her absence, but she is out sick this week. So hopefully I can stand in and get us through today's um, exciting event. I wanna give some special recognition to our Ocean Leadership Award Committee, Jenny Eckert, uh, Dale Hoffman, Jason Bruni, Lynn Polinski, Robert Sudam, and Shana Wisdom, and to the Board of Directors who are joining us today. Um, I'm gonna let Joanna let everyone know who's who on the Board of Directors because I can't see anybody right now except for my giant head. Let's see, we have uh, Robert Sudam on the call. Welcome, Robert. Um, strolling through, I did see Daryl Schaefermeyer. Welcome, Daryl. And Jim Cubitz is one of our board members. Let's close that out so I can see more people. Lou Lavoy, welcome. Uh, Nicole Kimball. And I think I saw somebody else. If I've missed you, please uh, speak up or let me know. But um, we appreciate our board members attending and, and representing here at the Sea Life Center. Thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks to all the award recipients, congratulations. We've been hosting these awards since 2010. They are typically given out at our Alaska Marine Gala in the winter, but of course all things are virtual these days, so here we are. But one perk of this virtual technology is that it does allow us to show off some of our animals here at the center. So while we do have a packed agenda today, we wanna to take a moment to show off some of our residents here at the center. And I wanna introduce Amy Bike from our avian staff. She'll be feeding and chatting in our aviary with some of our feathered friends. So Hello everyone, I'm Amy. And with me today is Han, short for Han Solo. Han is one of our resident tufted puffins. Right now, a lot of our birds are going through their seasonal molt. So if we take a look around, you might see some of them looking a little scraggly, uh, but Han is actually adult. So he's not gonna quite get, oh, he's very curious about that. What do you think, mister? <laughs> so Han was hatched in 2020 and he is the youngest bird we have here on our exhibit. Tuck your puffins. Pause for kitty rights. <laughs> Tuck the puffins take about five years to reach maturity. So he's not gonna get quite the tufts in the mask in, but you can see he's got a few growing in there. So Han is kind of a special case. His uh, parents egg out of the burrow here before he was even hatched. So he was hand reared and he's gonna be one of our education birds. This is kind of one of his first appearances and he's doing pretty well. Let's see if he would like some fish. You want some hooligan? Good boy. So that's some hooligan, one of the local Alaskan fish that we get brought in. And that's definitely a favorite here in our apiary. So along with Han, we've got eight other tufted puffins, 13 horned puffins. So our puffins are all growing, either growing in their tufts or their white face masks. And they're gonna start their courtship in a matter of weeks. You hear some of our puffins grumbling maybe too. They have a very distinct growl call. And if we have to pause for some very loud dull noise, those will be our red-legged kitty wakes. What do you think, bud? So this is actually really good. Han is actually very relaxed right now. The fact that he's just kind of sitting there. So you're not quite hungry enough. So he does actually have, unbeknownst to him, he has a girlfriend for him in the future too. Uh, he's gonna live out here in the aviary even when he's part of our education programs. Uh, and we have a young female puffin who thinks he's quite cute. Uh, she right, he right now kind of thinks she might have cuties since he's not quite old enough for a girlfriend. So he runs away from her. Oh, sorry, bud. Where are you gonna go? There we go. I know I mentioned your girlfriend. <laughs> so if you take a look at Han, you can see he's got his leg bands there, purple and red. That actually means he's the 38th puffin, uh, 38th tufted puffin that we have had here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. So we've hatched a bunch of those and we have not only his parents, 
but we also have some, he's got some cousins and some nieces and nephews and sisters all throughout the country. So a lot of the birds that hatch here at the Sea Life Center also get to go to other AZA facilities throughout the country. So we are helping share all kinds of education about our birds that way and information. So he's gonna be part of a long legacy uh, coming up soon. And he's looking forward to his big debut this summer. <laughs> right, buddy? <laughs> Looks like somebody may be ready to head out. I'm gonna see if I can get him to go on a big jump in the water. Nope, okay. <laughs> he's a little bit nervous about the big pool. He hopped in there one time and a fish touched his foot, so. <laughs> You want a snack for the road? There you go. Good boy. So it'll take him, like I said, probably another three years before he's going to look as good as his parents. His dad, Antonio, is actually known for having the best tufts on habitat. So he's got big shoes to fill coming up. Okay, bud. You ready to meet the public? You got a little, oh, there we go. <laughs> you want another piece? Or you just have to... Somebody will eat it. All righty. There we go, that's a better piece. So if we look, let's see, we've got our newest residents. We have a pair of spectacled eiders, Poe and Alcott. They were previously part of our eider research program and they moved up here in the fall because people are always asking us if they can see our spectacled eiders. Uh, these have been the first ones that the public's been able to get a good view of and they've been very popular residents. Um, Poe in particular has been part of our uh, social media outreach team recently that he's made a, a big deal about. So, Alrighty, well, I'm going to let people get on with our the show, but congratulations to all of our 2022 winners from here in the apiary and from Han. So thank you for thank you for being here today. Hey, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Han. Also, thank you, Katie, for running the camera for us. Katie Grant is our manager of communications. So let's get on to our awards. The first award tonight is our Ocean Ambassador Award. This award was created to recognize an individual organization that has made outstanding contributions to promoting public awareness and appreciation of Alaska's oceans, coasts, and marine ecosystems. It's only given on special occasions, and to present this award, I'd like to introduce Chip Arnold. Chip is our Chief Operating Officer here at the Sea Life Center and has been an integral employee at the center since, since 2001. Chip. Well, thank you, Jeff, um, and thanks to all of you for being here and for uh, helping me honor Richard Hawking. Uh, I got to work with him for over 20 years and uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I miss him every day and reading through the script that I have uh, to go through, uh, it, it reminded of him, me of him even more. And, and uh, But it also made me extremely proud for his contributions. Richard's passion for the ocean defined his work and his life. He spent 45 years working in the marine science field. That's a long time. Beginning with the Seattle Aquarium, I also believe he worked a bit with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, uh, Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium, and the Alaska Sea Life Center. And it was at the center that he worked his last 24 years and where he established an irreplaceable niche. Richard served as the aquarium curator right from the beginning in 1998 until his passing in November of 2021. Richard was known as one of the most hands-on curators in the building and was an active steward in ensuring the center always looked its best. He, he was always here. He was always tweaking things, fixing things. He became wild, widely known as the Alaska Sea Life Center resident nutritionist, believe it or not, understanding the intricate diets of every animal at, at every stage of life. He was able to secure salmon and pollock donations to feed the center's animals, and somehow made sure each and every living creature at the Alaska Sea Life Center had exactly what it needed. 
Richard led monitoring for marine aquatic invasive species in Resurrection Bay starting in 2009, sharing his data with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. He also assisted neighboring communities in their invasive species monitoring programs as well. Richard lent his expertise to other local marine oriented activities in the community, often working and conferring with the Aluchik Pride Shellfish Hatchery and serving as the expert fish authority in the ever popular Seward Silver Salmon Derby, placing his verification stamp on the winning salmon each year. Richard found joy in working with young people curious about marine science and conservation. He assisted with the center's after school program was a judge during the Alaska National, National Ocean Sciences Bowl, served as a graduate committee member for the Alaska Pacific University graduate students, and he was an unofficial advisor and guide for every scientist that worked at the Alaska Sea Life Center. His knowledge of marine animal biology and husbandry was unmatched. He was affectionately known as the octopus matchmaker and midwife. And I got to witness uh, some of those uh, births uh, and, and the caring that went on after that, as well as a walking, talking encyclopedia of marine science that could answer every question with wonderful and weird fun facts you never knew you needed to know. He, was, he co authored papers and was widely acknowledged contributor to dozens of research publications and projects, including but not limited to octopuses, crab, ground fish, salmonoids shellfish and marine mammals, as well as integ integrative habitat, I, I knew I was going to butcher that word, and ecosystem level studies. He sought out and promoted opportunities for the Alaska Sea Life Center staff to take part in uh, professional growth opportunities, ensuring our animal care teams remained highly skilled and qualified. Richard manifested a lifelong stewardship for the ocean and its inhabitants that he expressed through daily acts of service. His lifetime of work represents a boundless source of support, guidance, inspiration, and imagination, which has had a positive outcome on the people who wish to protect, preserve, and use the ocean's resources. Richard leaves a legacy of a life led by example, enthusiasm, and motivated by an enduring belief that ocean life could be used to convey the extraordinary richness of biological diversity. And further, that knowledge of the oceans could also be used to spark wonder and inspire others into action. It is my deep honor to present the 2022 Ocean Ambassador Award to the late Richard Hawking. Accepting this award is Richard's sister, Janet Sutro. Hi, Janet. Would you like to say a few words? You, you'll have to take yourself off mute to do that. I'm sorry. Thank you, Chip. They're beautiful award. Um, I'm honored to accept it on Richard's behalf. Um, I know he'd be thrilled and proud to be here to, to receive it himself, obviously, but um, I just had a few memories I would share from our childhood. Um, as I read the description and listened again to the description of Richard's accomplishments in his working life, I was struck by how all the signs pointing to his life's work were present in childhood. I remember him, how excited he was when he got his first microscope, probably about the age of 11 or so. Um, I think it was a Christmas present. Um, and then not uh, shortly after that, I remember being in a day spent in our kitchen table while he showed me how to use it as he loved to share his knowledge. And, and I guess he was concerned about my, to make sure I uh, absorbed all of his of his discoveries. I didn't realize until after he had died that he was the involvement he had in the, in the acquisition of food for all of the animals at the, at the Sea Life Center. But it doesn't really surprise me because he had, from a young age, he was a so extremely conscientious in his care of all the animals that he had, fish and salamanders, newts, um, and a few mammals too. <laughs> he, 
he always made sure that they had best living conditions and nutrition and he took uh, meticulous care of them. Re hearing about his involvement with students and interns, I'm reminded of talking to him on the phone and how excited he'd always be when going through new applications for interns and the interview process. He really enjoyed that. Also, when he was about 13 years old, he, uh, over the summer, he started a club that he called the Young People's Conservation Club. I, I remember because he made a flag go with our club. Um, I joined knowing, not knowing what conservation meant, but wanting to be part of any club that Richard organized. Um, most of our activities were educational. He would, Richard had cut out and mounted articles and made posters and, um, but it was indicative of, of what would become his lifelong work and his love of sharing his love for the, the ocean and the animals in it. Um, I'm extremely happy that he was able to pursue his dreams and his commitment to the oceans lifelong. That it, it's not always the case that people get to do the thing they love from a young age throughout their entire career. And I thank the Sea Life Center that community for all the love and support you extended to him and to our family. Thank you. I'll thank you, Janet. Thank you very much. Jeff? Thank you, Chip. Thank you, Janet. Uh, I think I can't think of a more fitting ocean ambassador than Richard. We certainly miss him here and count ourselves lucky to have known him. Now from a lifetime of service to ocean health, we'll now switch gears to an award recognizing someone who's just beyond their journey with the Hoffman Green Ocean Youth Award. This award is sponsored by Dale Hoffman and is bestowed on an individual or team of Alaskan youth up to 19 years old who have displayed a dedication to promoting the understanding and stewardship of Alaska's oceans. To present the award, I'd like to introduce Jenny Eckert. Jenny is a professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the director of Alaska Sea Grant, and a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. Jenny. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks to the Sea Life Center and to Dale for sponsoring this award. It's really an honor today to present this award because I know Elin personally. Um, uh, Elin is a Juno Douglas High School senior and she cares about the planet and the ocean. Uh, she cares about her family, friends, community, and everybody here in Alaska. Um, but she really cares about the planet and the ocean. And that was um, said of Elin in one of the nominations that was received. Um, she's a spunky, driven, and forward-thinking individual who is wise beyond her years. So Elin is working in a University of Alaska Fairbanks laboratory in Juneau. She's uh, working with graduate students, graduate students and faculty to help support research on harmful algal blooms, ocean acidification monitoring, and a variety of other things. She's a 4.0 student. She's participated in the National Ocean Sciences Bowl all four years um, that she's been in high school and she's been the rock of that team. So I wonder how they're gonna do after she leaves. Last summer, she held a Hutton Junior Fisheries Biology Program internship, which is funded by the American Fisheries Society. Uh, she, here, she worked closely with graduate students and faculty in remote field camps and in the lab uh, conducting uh, a variety of different research projects. And let me tell you, she loves fish. Um, anytime she had the chance to pull fish out of the beach saying it was like her happiest day. She collects old buoys, um, which not only removes trash from the beaches, but it repurposes them with an Alaskan owned, uh, Alas an Alaskan ocean themed art. So she paints them. Um, and creates these beautiful works of art and then shares them with people. Um, so these honor the diverse fishers and vessels who navigate um, and enjoy the bounty of our oceans and create a work of art in the process. So she not only expands on her own scientific knowledge, but she has a vested interest in public scientific education, 
She shows understanding and ability um, to communicate complex ecological processes. She's co-published articles in the Juno Empire and Pacific Fishing Magazine, explaining roles that sea otters can play in marine ecosystems. She's led squid dissections with elementary school students. She's uh, saved halibut heads to take out odorless. Uh, she's picked up work days at the local oyster farm. And whatever she does, she continues to share the intrigue of marine organisms with the next generation. And she's the next generation. So it's pretty amazing that she's the one communicating all the time. So as a student, Elin devours texts to foster her own self-growth in any of the subjects of marine sciences. She's incredibly intelligent, very motivated, and she's tireless and enthusiastic in speaking um, about everything having, having to do with the ocean. She's applied to and been accepted at a whole handful of universities. She's gonna have a hard time picking, maybe she has already, um, including University of Alaska Fairbanks, Colorado College, UC San Diego, Hawaii Pacific, Quest, Cal Poly Humboldt, um, where she's eventually gonna go study ocean and marine science and communicate her desire to find solutions for the future health of our marine environments. She's also an elite dancer, president of the Nordic Club, a member of the National Honor Society, an employee of Salty Lady Seafood, which is a local oyster farm, and does a whole variety of other things too. So it's my great honor to present the 2022 Hoffman Green Ocean Youth Award to Elin. And Elin, please, please say something. Thank you, Ginny. Um, and thank you to everyone else who nominated me to the, for this award. Uh, Leah, Courtney, Muriel, Maida, Mr. Carney. Just thank you everyone and everyone who supported me or listened to me talk about phytoplankton for like three hours or fish or talk about the buffalo sculpin I named out of one saying named Larry. That is my forever favorite fish. But just thank you so much everyone and thank you to the Alaska Sea Life Center and Dale Hoffman. The Alaska Sea Life Center has had such an impact on me through four years of NOSB and being able to come and see the center and it's just so great and I love the ocean so thank you to the ocean but definitely a year ago when I applied to the Hutton internship I would have never imagined the opportunities that I have had um, to work at the lab and to work at the oyster farm and to go out in the field and have these relationships with people at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and be able to be like, I know how to talk about something random that like, can I age a gooey duck? Yes, I can. And it's just so fun. And I'm just so happy to be here and thank you so much. Thanks, Jenny. Congratulations, Elon. It is a pleasure to see you here and not up on stage with your team at NOSB for doing your presentation. Oh, great job. Hey, Jeff, can I make a quick comment? This is yeah, Dale. Please do. So I know everybody thinks I named that award after my big head, but I, I want Elin to know that the Hoffmans in that award are my great nieces who are 21 and 20. So just a little bit older than you and very involved in the ocean. And then the green is their sister. So my great niece by sisterhood, whatever that means. Um, but again, they're just a little bit older than you and the niece at the uh, youngest one's 15. So you're having an impact on those guys also. So thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. Our next award is the Marine Science Outreach Award. This award is sponsored by the Alaska Ocean Observing System. The Marine Science Outreach Award is given to a person, team, or organization that has made an outstanding contribution to ocean literacy via formal or informal education, media, or other communications about Alaska's marine ecosystem. And as someone who has worked closely on many projects with our winner for over 10 years now, I'm happy to have the distinct pleasure to present this award to Jim Pfeifenberger. This is from Jim's nomination. Jim has done an extraordinary job of connecting students and adults of all ages to the wonders, mysteries, challenges, science, and stewardship of Alaska's marine and coastal ecosystems. From teaching in classrooms and located in rural, remote or rural Alaskan communities, in-person programs along coastlines or from ships, or virtual and online platforms when the need arose, Jim has embraced every opportunity to connect students to the marine environment, 
the science that helps inform its stewardship and management and protection, as well as doing the hard work of cleaning it up. Throughout his career, Jim has designed an innovative and engaging media that has connected thousands of people to Alaska's 11 coastal parks and their diverse and culturally important resources. His portfolio of accomplishments include video, virtual tours, music. If you've never heard his CD, you need to get it. Education programs, teacher workshops. He provides technical assistance to national parks, schools, and partners. And in 2021, he added a primary school book focused on sea otters to his list of work products. Jim is clearly inspired by the sea connection to community and education. He's thrived working as the education coordinator for the Alaska for the Ocean Alaska Science and Learning Center, co-located co co here in Seward at Kenai Fjords National Park. And in this position, he's made marine science ecosystems and stewardship relevant, meaningful, and inspiring for students from K through 12 and beyond. His work is focused on research, science, and educated related to our coastal parks, associated waters and lands, as well as the mission of the Ocean Alaska Science and Learning Center. Jim work, Jim's work has found its way into thousands of students' education lessons, while the voices of young students sing out. Uh, the connections with their food webs or the importance of adaptations from songs Jim has written that make marine species and ecosystems functioning come to life. One of the highlights I think was a few years ago the Seward Elementary School did entire musical based on Jim's work and it was pretty cute to see the little otters swimming in the water. Jim has helped students find their marine science careers. Some of these students now work as employees here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, some work in the National Park Service and other marine and science institutions. He's co-created educational content with teachers, collaborated with colleagues across great distances, as well as virtual connections to elevate the practice of marine science education and stewardship. Jim has developed a comprehensive array of stories, video, photography, and marine science products that hold their audiences and their relevancy through time because he understands how to capture hearts, minds, and the importance of the moment. He helped develop a floating teacher workshop that pairs teachers with researchers doing an immersive level kind of field experience, allowing teachers to assist and experience firsthand how data is collected and why it informs ecosystem functioning and management. This program provides teachers an opportunity to learn firsthand about the impacts of the Exxon Valdez oil spill along the coast of Kenai Fjords National Park, while also experiencing the scale and wonder of our Alaska coast. In short, Jim's professional delivery of education in the field of marine science and outreach has been transformational transforming students, teachers, and visitors' first impressions into knowledge and ultimately into care. He's also one of the best collaborators and colleagues I've ever been lucky enough to know during my career. And so I am personally happy to say, as well as Jim's <clears throat> nominator, Jim, well done, this award is much reserved. It's my honor to present the 2022 Marine Science Outreach Award to Jim Feifenberger. Jim. All right. Well, thanks, Jeff, very much. Um, as the other recipients uh, know, we received these beautiful uh, sort of trophies or mementos uh, of the uh, award this year. So I really appreciate that. I'll set that down here. And uh, yeah, I uh, I hope I've done. Uh, gosh, it, it got to be kind of a long list there. But thinking back, you know, I've had some time to to work at this. So I'm I'm approaching sort of the end of my. Um, you know, 20 plus, 30 plus year career uh, doing um, marine outreach. And uh, yeah, things add up over time, but none of it really can I take the sole credit for. Um, so um, let me start by saying it is nice to be recognized. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, you work away. I think all of us have those days where you're working away at stuff and you think, does anybody really notice? Does any of this really matter? And it's nice to have some recognition that people do notice the effort that you're putting in and, and do acknowledge that hopefully it, it does matter and have some impact. So, so I really appreciate that uh, acknowledgement. Um, but like I say, none of it is solely credited to me because this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't happen by me sitting here in my office alone, which I've done far too much the last couple of years. <laughs> I think all of us have done that. Um, but, but it really happens because you have uh, the support of a team and you have collaborators. and um, you know, it's support of people at the leadership level um, who are willing to let you go out and do your thing, you know? And so I've, uh, I've had that throughout my career with leaders like uh, 
you know, like a Peter Armato or Benjamin Pister or Shauna Pataki, who have, you know, been my direct supervisors or even, you know, uh, higher up the food chain than that with the uh, superintendents like the Jeff Maus and, and John Carroll's and, uh, and uh, of the of my world uh, who have always supported what we've done and given me uh, um, the freedom to pursue uh, what I thought was the right thing to do uh, in, in most of these cases. So I really appreciate that kind of support. Um, you know, there's also the support of everybody uh, here in the Park Service at the administrative level. Um, uh, the government is a bureaucracy and it's kind of hard to navigate sometimes. And I have support from, you know, people in the office, the Sarah Bondriffs and Lisa McClure's and Denny Murphy's who make sure that we get uh, everything done the right way and, and get all through the red tape that is part of our system. So I appreciate all that support. Um, you know, it doesn't get done without folks like that. And uh, but also the sort of some of the things that Jeff listed off, they happen because I, I've had excellent collaborators uh, through the years as well. Um, and some of those are collaborators like, you know, Jeff Dillon or Darren Trobaugh, you know, people I've worked with for years uh, doing uh, marine uh, education and outreach or, um, you know, uh, folks over at the Kachemak Bay Research Reserve or, or collaborators right here in the Park Service, uh, both on the education and research side, people like a Heather Coletti, who some of you may know, uh, uh, a researcher who uh, studies uh, the nearshore environment and has been instrumental in getting like the teacher workshops off the ground or, or uh, someone who I think will be recognized later today, someone like Tula, you know, Holman, who's willing to work with high school kids here in Seward and let us, uh, you know, share her knowledge and, and the research interests that she has uh, with students. So I just feel lucky to be a part of all those collaborations because uh, it certainly doesn't happen um, in a vacuum. It takes a lot of people to get this stuff done. Um, and then finally, you know, you, you have to have willing uh, recipients of what you produce too. So I'm really grateful to all the teachers who have been willing to let us into their classrooms to give us access to their students directly or who've taken part in our workshops and, and appear enthusiastic about what we present and take it back to the schools and, and do, uh, um, you know, implement some of what they've learned about marine stewardship into their classrooms. I'll never forget doing a teacher workshop that was specifically on ocean literacy, the ocean literacy principles um, here in Seward and two Seward teachers attended that workshop and they went back and about a month later, they held a parents night. It was a night aimed at reading uh, where they bring parents in, they give them books and they talk about reading with the families and there's all these stations set up and they centered each station around one ocean literacy principle. So the whole community of Seward was exposed to these uh, principles as a result of that workshop and, and as a result of those teachers embracing it. So uh, appreciation to, you know, the teachers and students who've, uh, who've um, you know, participated in the stuff that we've, uh, that we've offered. And, uh, you know, with the students, you certainly hope you're having some influence on them. And uh, when people ask me what my job is, I generally don't go through a long list of duties and so forth. I basically sum it up as saying, my job is aimed at creating the next generation of stewards to help protect the ocean uh, today and in the future. And that's about as simply as I can sum it up. And I certainly hope I've had you know, some impact and some movement towards that goal. I mean, the ocean uh, itself is a very, very big place, you know, and, uh, and I'm just one, uh, one person working, like I say, in collaboration with all these others. And uh, I hope we've made, you know, kind of like a pebble dropping into that ocean that we've, we're tiny, but, uh, but we hit the surface and we were rippling out, hopefully at some level uh, and having an impact across a broader uh, area than we even know, you know, and hopefully that that impact goes more broadly than we even know. That's one of the things about working with students is uh, you're really planting seeds. You're 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 exposing them to these concepts and you're you're introducing them to conservation. And you may not know what uh, fruit that seed bears because that that kid may not really have uh, a light go on or become a, a conservation minded person until later in life when when you're not no longer really in there. Uh, circle, but but you hope that uh, all those seeds you're planting that at least some of them take root and and grow and help uh, ultimately help uh, protect our oceans in the future. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm very honored to be among this group of recipients, and um, yeah, it's just greatly appreciated to have some recognition. Thank you very much. Once again, congratulations, Jim. I think if Elon is any indication, you've had a real broad impact in your work, and our future is in pretty good hands. The next award is the Stewardship and Sustainability Award. 
This award is sponsored by Jason Bruni and is given to an industry initiative that demonstrates the highest commitment, sustainability, and ocean resources. To present this award, please welcome Jason Bruni, who is the award sponsor. He's also the commissioner of the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation, a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee and former board member of the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's good to see you, Jason. Good to see you, Jeff, and thank you so much. And congratulations to all the previous winners and Elin especially. I can't wait to see you leading this state and all of your, your passion that you're going to be having uh, uh, in the future. Uh, I've sponsored this award since its inception, and I have to tell you that this is one of, uh, if not the most impressive uh, nomination and award recipient I've ever seen. Um, the impact on the ocean is significant, and especially given my current role, it was awesome to, uh, to see this nomination um, and uh, to see John Binkley uh, win it. It's, it's uh, all, all the more cool. So. Um, Today I'm presenting uh, the Stewardship and Sustainability Award to the Mill at Ward Cove, uh, which is a, a partnership between Ward Cove Dock Group LLC and Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings L uh, Limited. Um, they built a two berth floating cruise ship dock and corresponding welcome center and passenger transit facility at Ward Cove near Ketchikan. Uh, when the Ketchikan pulp mill closed in 1997, uh, Ward Cove was found to be contaminated uh, with fuels, paints, heavy metals, as well as large qualities of sunken logs, uh, which affected the health of all local marine life. Uh, Ward Cove was then uh, declared a Superfund site under CERCLA, which is the Comprehensive Environmental Response uh, Compensation and Liability Act, and was ultimately remediated uh, and institutional controls were placed uh, uh, under the oversight of the EPA and DEC. Um, under the leadership of John, uh, and Dave Spokely, a plan was created to responsibly repurpose this area. And yeah, I have to tell you, we need more things like this. And this is such an amazing example of repurposing former uh, contaminated sites. Uh, this uh, innovative uh, design and construction uh, of uh, this cruise ship uh, dock uh, uh, resulted in receiving the prestigious Associated General Contractors National Build America Award. Uh, but more prestigious, of course, is the uh, uh, stewardship and sustainability award that uh, it's receiving. Uh, that that project with the uh, national AGC uh, uh, recognizes state of the art projects that emphasize environmental sensitivity, and and none more did that than this. Uh, this project has transitioned a decaying brownfield site into a place the community takes pride in once again. Uh, the advanced design of the dock required fewer pilings to be drilled into the ocean floor, uh, which ultimately reduced the impact on the sand cap. Uh, additionally, the unique construction techniques preserved the sensitive marine environment. And today, with ongoing monitoring, the marine life is thriving in Ward Cove. And the Ward uh, Cove Dock Group is committed to preserving the sensitive environment into the future, as well as having an opportunity for a number of visitors to come to Alaska and enjoy the beauty that we have here in our marine life and our coastal communities. It's my honor today to present the 2022 Stewardship and Sustainability Award to Ward Cove Dock Group uh, and Norwegian Cruise Lines. And uh, it's my, uh, especially my honor to give this, uh, this award to John Binkley, who will be accepting it on behalf of the group. Congratulations, John. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner. That's, uh, I'm humbled by that and very appreciative. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, last minute travel plans, uh, I'm not in Ward Cove, I think. The commissioner, that looks just like Ward Cove that you're at, commissioner, <laughs> with palm trees. <laughs> I tried. From the background, but I'm, I find myself in a hotel room in Detroit, so um, <clears throat> not exactly uh, where I'd like to be right now, and I don't have my trophy to display, but it is a beautiful award, and I, I want to thank you, commissioner, uh, the board of the Sea Life Center, uh, the awards committee as well for this honor. We really are humbled uh, and honored by this recognition, uh, particularly given where it's coming from, the Sea Life Center, uh, the mission of the Sea Life Center, the research, uh, but also from our perspective, my perspective being in the visitor industry all these years, the outreach that the Sea Life Center does of educating and informing um, not just Alaskans, but thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors every year from all around the world that really get an opportunity to intimately know and understand how important the ocean environment is, what it, it involves in Alaska, and how we all need to be stewards 
of that. And so the, the mission and what is accomplished by this Sea Life Center is incredible and has a huge impact uh, around the world and for, for many, many years to come. And uh, in Ward Cove, it's, uh, I think as Jim mentioned earlier, it's, it's not just one individual, but it, it takes uh, so many different people to make a project like uh, we were able to accomplish in Ward Cove come to life and, and be a reality. And um, we're certainly proud of our partners uh, in the, the enterprise in Ketchikan, the Spokely family. They're a wonderful family who really have a, a great ethos and um, uh, desire to really give back to the community and to build something for the community. And we've got partners in different businesses around the state, but they are very, very special people and we're proud to have them partners. In addition, of course, you can't have projects like this without commerce. And really that was with our partnership with Norwegian Cruise Lines. They are very, uh, an incredibly, uh, an incredible organization. They're like family. I come from a family business and it feels so natural to be with that company. They treat their employees, their people like family. They care. Uh, they care about Alaska. They care about the environment and they um, want to do what they can to protect that as well. And so with that partnership, it's really allowed us to generate the commerce there that has allowed us to build back the mill and really restore this brownfield site. Uh, as you mentioned in your opening commissioner, something that is historic, that is really revered by the community, that is, is special to people in Ketchikan and all of Southeast. Uh, the old pulp mill, the old Ketchikan pulp mill that really drove the, the uh, economy in that part of Alaska for decades uh, and then was closed down in uh, 1997. So it's, uh, it's, it's a great project. I love working there every day, uh, trying to bring back the mill and, and also sharing with visitors that come in uh, particularly in that case about the Tongass National Forest. It is just a national treasure and it really uh, is something that is, that is special there. The, the aquatic part of it, the ocean and the forest itself. And uh, we feel proud to, to be really the stewards of that former surplus site and to protect it and to enhance the marine life there as well going forward. So. Again, uh, my thanks to you, Commissioner, uh, to the Sea Life Center Board and the Wards Committee, and to our partners as well. Great, thanks, Jason. Congratulations, John, to you and all your colleagues at Ward Dock, and Ward Cove Dock and Norwegian Cruise Line. That is an amazing place. You guys have done such really cool work there. It's one of my favorite places to visit when I'm in Southeast. Thank you, Next Jeff. is our Marine Research Award. This award is sponsored by Drs. Uh, Clarence Potsky and Maureen McCray and given to a scientist, team of scientists or an institution that is acknowledged by peers to have made an original breakthrough contribution or a career spanning achievement in any field of scientific knowledge about Alaska's ocean. To present this award, I'd like to introduce Lynn Polensky, who is the executive director of the North Pacific Research Board and also a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee, Lynn. You're muted. You're a mute, Lynn. <laughs> Am I the first one to do that? <laughs> Sorry about that, Tula. Um, so uh, some of Tula's closest colleagues might say that she embodies two things that Finns are uh, most known for, one's being modest and two being very close to nature. We all know she's close to nature all the time, and it's my job now to expand on the areas that she might be uh, modest about saying herself. So, Dr. Tula Holman's career reflects three decades of work on seabird ecology and epidemiology, including 20 years of focus on the threatened Stellar's Eider. She applies her veterinary and biology training to a broad portfolio of field work, lab work, lab analysis, modeling, and teaching. She currently holds positions as a senior research scientist at the Alaska Sea Life Center and as a research associate professor at the College of Fisheries and Ocean Science and the Center for One Health Research at University of Alaska Fairbanks. That's a lot. 
which is a mouthful. Dr. Holman served as a science director at the Alaska Sea Life Center from 2010 to 2015, as well as the IDER program manager since 2002. She is a member of both Spectacled and Stellar's IDER recovery teams and was the chair for the Stellar's IDER reintroduction committee. She also found time to sit as vice chair of the North Research, North Pacific Research Board Science Panel for eight years. That's my organization. Thank you, Tula. She's active in all aspects of this career path, individual and team research, teaching, and she has broad participation in the scientific community as well as in the local community in Seward, as we heard earlier. Her meticulous approach is evident in her continued success. Dr. Holman and her team successfully established a captive breeding flock of threatened Stellar's eiders at the Sea Life Center to serve as one of the main routes for potential reintroduction into the wild. Prior to this facility, Dr. Holman's research at the Sea Life Center, Stellar's eiders had, have never successfully been bred in captivity in North America. Her efforts in this program have brought together many people, many organizations, including the Fish and Wildlife Service, the uh, USGS, many nonprofits, academia, and local partners for a common cause. Most recently, her research has provided groundbreaking insights into the impacts of climate change on Arctic lagoons and coastal ecology with real-time implications to marine species and conservation efforts. It is my honor to present the 2022 Marine Research Award to Dr. Tula Holman. Tula, do you wanna say a few words? Uh, sure, thank you, Lynn, for that wonderful presentation. and. Here is the beautiful award. <laughs> it is uh, truly a great honor to receive this award and an honor to be in the company of those that received it this year and previous recipients as well. I'm also very grateful to those who nominated and selected me for this award. So I am thankful to have had so many people in my life whose support through the years is the reason that I am here today. And I need to start with my mom and dad who enthusiastically supported my decision to take this dream opportunity to work in Alaska a little bit over 20 years ago. It did turn out a little bit later that one of the factors in their enthusiasm was uh, related to all the great fishing opportunities in Alaska. And they ended up visiting many times and it actually has turned out to be a really positive move for the entire Finnish family. So I'd like to also thank Dirk Dirksen from USGS who first encouraged me to apply to this position and both Dirk and Paul Flynn from USGS for welcoming me to Alaska as a colleague. Through all these years, I've been so fortunate to have had many inspiring mentors. They shared their knowledge and perspectives and had a key role in shaping my career. I've been able to work with incredible colleagues at the Sea Life Center, at the UAF, at, um, with agencies and far beyond in Alaska nationally and internationally. I've been able to work with colleagues who have expanded my horizons, including some that are recipients this year, Jim Pfeifenberger, and it's been an honor to work with him on outreach and education programs, and also Robert Sudam, who's been um, a really uh, inspiration in thinking about high Arctic ecology and wildlife management perspectives. I want to thank all my amazing students and staff, their hard work, enthusiasm, and creativity makes the research happen every day. And the discoveries they make and we make together keeps the work exciting, fun, and meaningful every day. And then finally, I'm grateful for my family and friends in Finland and Alaska, including brothers, nieces, nephews, my aunt, other relatives, and um, with recent addition of not one, but three babies to the Alaska family kept us busy. Friends offer their time to share bike rides, play music, weave baskets, and so much more. And last but not least, I'm grateful for my partner, George, who keeps me on the trails every day in every possible Seward weather. So thank you again for honoring me with this award. It's truly a high point. 
and an inspiration to continue the journey, appreciating all the amazing people and opportunities in my life. Thank you all. And finally, I'd like to thank the organizers of this nice event. It will be a nice memory for future. And also I was very thrilled to meet our first visitors, the group of seabirds from the Sea Life Center. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Congratulations, Tula. We are thank you, Tula. So lucky to have you work with us here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's been an honor to call you a colleague and a pleasure to work with you and your amazing research team. We have a new exhibit, thanks to NPRB coming, that highlights Tula's work. So make sure you visit if you want to know more about the amazing things that Tula does here. But congratulations. Our final award of the afternoon is the Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is sponsored by the late Governor Walter J. Hickel and the late Emily Hickel. It is bestowed to an individual or an institution that has made an exceptional contribution to management of Alaska's coastal and ocean resources over a period of 20 or more years. And to present this award, I'd like to introduce Dale Hoffman, who's a former member of the Alaska Sea Life Center Board of Directors, sponsor of the Hoffman Green Ocean Youth Award, and a member of the Ocean Leadership Awards Committee. Dale. You're on mute. I didn't want her to be the only one, okay? So, uh, thanks Jeff and thanks to Joanna, especially for all her hard work and patience with our committee and putting the text of my comments together. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of things I could have said about Robert, but um, none of them should have been heard in public. So this will be good. Um, and thanks to the Sea Life Center for the opportunity to, to do this tonight because uh, it looks dark outside because it's 8.30 here in Florida. So thanks. But before I get on to Robert's award, I want to say congratulations to all the winners and especially to Elin. Thanks for all you do. That's really cool. Well, speaking of all people do, how about Robert Sudam? What a tremendous recipient for the Lifetime Achievement Award. His three decades of research with the North Slope Borough Department of Wildlife Management on bowhead and belugas, as well as his deep involvement with co-management and Alaska Native Organization, represents a truly exceptional contribution to the management and science of Alaska's marine mammal resources. And Robert's committed. I don't know how many years he's lived in Barrow, uh, probably close to 30. Um, you can tell us that later, but I've, I've known him for almost 20 years and he's lived up there ever since I first met him. So as a senior wildlife biologist, Robert has similarly worked with federal, state, native organizations, oil companies, and have been entrusted with the management of other Arctic species, such as belugas and polar bears. And for the longest time, I thought he had a PhD in uh, bowheads, but come to find out his specialty was belugas. Is that correct, Robert? I think that's right. Um, he's published well over 200 peer-reviewed papers and technical report throughout his career on a wide range of species and topics. I mentioned that he was a senior wildlife biologist, but in addition to that, he served on multiple advisory panels and boards that have greatly advanced understanding the Arctic and subarctic marine environment, including science advisor of the US Marine Mammal Commission, member of the National Research Council, fellow of the Arctic Institute of North America, a member of the Alaska Beluga Whale Committee, and advisor to the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission, where I got to know him really well. Um, Robert's been a member of the International Whaling Commission Scientific Committee since 1999, and recently completed terms as vice chair and chair. The IWC, as you may know, is the international treaty organization that steers the management and conservation to meet Alaska Natives' cultural and subsistence need. Through his time on the Commission Scientific Committee, Robert has made invaluable impacts on whale science, sustainable whaling management, and Aboriginal rights. I've witnessed several times when uh, North Slope Borough crews, particularly Barrow, have brought whales ashore, and it's not uncommon to see Robert on the ground up to his elbows looking for something inside that whale. I don't know what he was doing, but glad that was his job. Um, he has also helped to ensure the highest standards of cetacean research through his dedication to science-based harvest management of indigenous whale hunters. One of his more important and unique achievements has been his long and consistent involvement advancing the use of traditional knowledge and scientific research and management. And I can tell you as someone that worked with him on that area, I can't tell you how many meetings I went to about traditional knowledge. It was, it was interesting to me because I certainly didn't know anything about it. I think it was very helpful for all of us in terms of management policies. 
He's been a strong and articulate advocate, advocate for Alaskan natural native subsistence foods to harvest marine mammals and feed their communities with traditional foods. Although I can't say that he was as brave as his coworker, Craig George, who ate some muktuk from a ice cellar that was, I don't know, maybe a hundred years old or something like that. Um, so, old. yeah. So Robert's known for being tough, but fair. And I can say that having worked with him, that's extremely true. He's an effective leader of scientific and policy advancements with professionalism, good humor, and respect. Like he said, on a personal note, I work closely with him, as did others in the oil and gas industry in Alaska, to ensure the Im implementation of sound science-driven policies related to offshore exploration and development as and assisted the protection of the Arctic environment and fauna potentially impacted by our work. Why, there was even a North Slope achievement more given his honor to some of the folks in the oil company for his efforts. Pat Foley thanks you for that. He is widely liked and respected by his peers as reflected at the IWC by their selection of him from scientists from over 80 member company countries to serve as the chair of the scientific committee. Without Robert's lifetime efforts, the Alaska Seascape and Native Subsistence Hunting Management Policy would undoubtedly be drastically different and certainly less effective than it is today. Years ago, I recommended Robert for a board position with the Alaska Sea Life Center where he has served diligently since then. It's now my pleasure and privilege to present the 2022 Lifetime Achievement Award to my friend and colleague, Dr. Robert Sudan. And Robert, if you have any comments for us. Thank you very much, Dale. First, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, You're good. smart enough to turn your mic on. <laughs> I learned, I can learn. Um, I, the, the internet connection is spotty here today. And so uh, hopefully um, I don't get cut off here or maybe I, uh, maybe, no, uh, hopefully I don't get cut off. Um, Dale, thanks so much. Well, it's good to see you first and we miss you on the board, um, but it's good to see you on Zoom calls periodically. And um, uh, thanks, thanks for all the really nice, nice things you said about me. Um, sometimes it's hard to um, to sit and listen um, that kind of praise, and I greatly appreciate it. Um, it's a little odd getting a lifetime achievement award. Um, I'm for me, I'm I'm too young. I, I my life has just begun. I still have lots of years to go. Um, but given that I'm almost completely gray, and given that I retired last year. Um, I'm, I'm grateful and honored to, to receive the award, but it's also made me think back um, a little bit on my career in Northern Alaska. And, and then my first, first summer here was um, almost, almost 34 years ago um, when I came up to, to Barrow, it was called Barrow then. And uh, I spent uh, the summer of 88 and 89 out on Cooper Island with George DeVoke studying um, seabirds, black, black guillemots. And um, I know when I left California, my mom was worried that I was going to um, get eaten by a polar bear. And fortunately, um, that hasn't happened. There've been a couple of close calls, but uh, not, not too close. Um, and, uh, and so in 1990, um, Craig George, the guy who ate the thousand-year-old muktuk, not a hundred, Dale, but a thousand-year-old muktuk, um, encouraged me to apply for a job uh, with the North Slope Borough. And I never thought I'd be really considered for the job, um, and so was very surprised when it was offered to me by, by Ben Nagiak, the, the director of the department at that time. Um, and, uh, and so when I talked to Ben, I said, well, how, how long do you want me to commit to, to being in the position? And Ben said, oh, two years. It's like, okay, I can do two years in Barrow. I could do two years of wherever. Um, and my first day on the job, Craig took me out on the sea ice and got to see um, incredibly large polar bear prints, polar bear tracks. Um, I got to go to the ice edge and watch bowheads and belugas and, and eiders and all kinds of other incredible things. And, and at that moment, I realized it would be more than two years that I would be here. Um, but I never thought it would be 31 and a half that I would have lived um, here in what's now called Utkiavik. And, um, you know, as, as Jim and John and Tula all mentioned today, that these kind of awards aren't aren't really just
just a reflection of kind of the, the name on, on the, the award, but it's really about um, kind of partnerships and collaborations. And, and I have been incredibly fortunate um, to, to be in, to work with a lot of really good people. Um, you know, Tukli Kepa, who is the director of the department, um, she and Brian Pearson, uh, who's now a senior uh, wildlife biologist, thank you very much for your nominations. Uh, Tukli started, I think, a couple of months after I did, so we've um, really worked together uh, for a long, long time. Um, you know, Craig George, Harry Brower, uh, many other people here in Ukiavik have, have been um, amazingly supportive and tolerant sometimes and forgiving sometimes. Um, and all of that support and collaboration has just, uh, has, has meant the world to me. Um, you know, working with the Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission with the Alaska Beluga Whale Committee um, has, has been fantastic. Working with the village of Point Lay and other villages um, on the North Slope but in other places of Alaska too has, has been, been really meaningful. Um, for me, part of my, my collaborators and partnerships um, have been not just with the native community um, in Northern and Western Alaska, but um, also with, with other organizations, Dale mentioned some of those, but um, being on the board of the Alaska Sea Life Center is incredibly rewarding, and um, I hope I can continue to do that for a while. Um, Tula got me involved in the, um, the Science Advisory Committee there at the Sea Life Center as well, and all of those things have, have, have been, been fantastic. Um, it feels a little like like the Oscars. Um, one of the good things about a Zoom Zoom session of awards is nobody's going to hit anybody else, so that kind of avoids some of those those uh, possible issues. Um, I wish that we were all in the same room and could talk about these things, um, not just not just in in the manner that we're doing today, but um, you know, in a drink afterwards or over dinner or something like that. So hopefully, um, we can we can be there um, next uh, next year. So, so again, I'm, I'm truly honored um, to receive this. And even though it's a Lifetime Achievement Award, um, I'm um, looking forward to many more years of, of working with folks um, across Alaska and hopefully other places and contributing to the conservation of, and education uh, about the, the world's oceans and the sea life um, that live there. Because uh, there's so much more that we need to learn. and, and uh, I, I was fortunate enough to give a lecture just a couple of days ago at the Osher Institute at Boise State University about whales, dolphins, and porpoises of the world. And one of the things that I got to mention is that a new baleen whale was discovered in the last two or three years, and a new beaked whale uh, was discovered in the last year or two. And, and I mentioned that just because it's an example of how much we don't know um, about the world, that there's so many, about the oceans especially, there's so many species out there that we don't know about. And, and with the changes that we're seeing happening now, um, if we don't, don't learn about those things, um, we'll have a really hard time making sure that they're, they're around for our kids and, and grandkids. Um, to enjoy and, and learn more about as well. Um, so again, congratulations to all the other recipients uh, today. Uh, thanks to the Alaska Sea Life Center um, for the, the Ocean Leadership Awards uh, Committee. Uh, Joanna, thanks for, for your efforts. Um, I'd also like to thank my parents that, that they connected here from California. And I'd also like to thank my wife, Leslie, um, who connected from, from Idaho here um, this afternoon too. Um, so thanks, thanks everybody. And I look, look forward to many more years of working with y'all. Thanks, Dale. Congratulations, Robert. It's been a real pleasure to work with you on the board over the last few years, very well deserved. And to Elon, I'm sure you'll find yourself back here after a lifetime of amazing experience. Most of us have dedicated our careers to ocean conservation. I hope you can see the pride and the passion and the pleasure it's given us. You've made a good pick for your future. I wanted to let everyone know today's event has been recorded. It'll soon be posted on our website and our YouTube channel. 
So if you had anyone who couldn't make it today, um, and you want to share this on your socials, that would be great. Um, and yeah. thanks again. Yeah. yeah Dale yeah. Hoffman, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I just want to invite everybody that's on the call, and if you have any friends headed to Florida and you'd like to see the Florida Aquarium, I sit on our executive committee and chair the Animal Collections Committee and would love to have the opportunity to host you through the facility if anybody makes it down this way. Super generous, Dale. Thank Thanks. you. If you haven't been to the Florida Aquarium, I highly recommend it. If you're on the Gulf Coast, it is worth a visit. What a great, great place and an inspiration for the architecture here. Some of it. Uh, so thanks for joining with us. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, our award presenters, the award committee. And once again, uh, congratulations to all the winners. You're all very deserving of your efforts in care of Alaska's oceans, in which we couldn't be more grateful for your dedication. You all truly represent what is best about our mission here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Have a great afternoon, everyone. We hope to see you at the center soon. And for those of you lucky enough to be here, have a great Alaska summer. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, Robert.